Hi, my name is William and in today's video we are going to focus on how you create this chart that you see here in Excel. Creating a chart in Excel is one part, but it's also important to highlight important points uh, for your viewers to spend less time trying to detect what are the uh, objectives of your chart or what do you want them to focus on. This video will be in two parts. And one part will be focusing on those who have Office 365. The other part will focus on the rest who have Office 2013, 2016 or 2019 or even 2021. The main difference between the two versions will basically be the formulas that we apply to generate uh, the data that is going to drive the chart. Ideally, if you look at this table that you see here on screen, uh, the data is not sorted in any order but we need this chart to show the data in a sorted order. So let's first focus with those who are using Excel 2013, 2016, 2019 or 2021. And with the data that you have here on the screen, remember we need to create, we don't want to sort this data automatically because we could do that and sort by the value column. But essentially the assumption is that the data that you're creating the chart uh, from is dynamic and it will be changing depending on which period uh, that you select probably in a dashboard setup and therefore this one is just static as it is but it will serve the purpose so the first point is to be able to return this data uh, in a sorted way from descending to ascending or ascending to descending so first of all if you're using the versions which I've mentioned we need to uh, get the ranking of these uh, numbers. So the first thing we are going to create here is the rank and the function that we need here is equals rank and here you have rank.eq or the rank function. These two will apply but let me go with .eq. Uh, the number that we want to rank is this value that we have for Nikon Z8 comma the ref uh, in the syntax is the list of numbers that you want to run the 7.8 million here against. So we highlight the entire list, including the number that you want to uh, rank. That list needs to be locked. So I'll press Fn4 in my keyboard just to apply the dollar signs. Then put a comma and choose how do you want this to be sorted? Is it ascending or descending? We'll put zero for descending. So when we enter, you will see the values have been sorted or have been ranked. As you can see, this one is the highest, is ranked number one. This one is two and you have number three and so forth downstream. Having ranked the values here, the next stop will be to create a table that will drive the chart. And therefore, what I'll do here, I'll come to column G and probably type these numbers. Uh, remember we are using this option here is for those who have earlier versions of Excel and therefore I'll type the numbers 1 and 2 and then I'll drag them to all the way to number 25 because we have 25 items here. Uh, so this one will give us the order that we want. But then we need this value here. So let me just copy these labels here because we need the camera and then the value in a sorted way. Now, if we have these numbers that you see here, and we need to return the camera and the value, here we can use various functions, um, but the one that I want to go with is the index function. So I'll say equals index, open the bracket, then it will ask you for the array that you want to return data from. So I'll select this array, and since I want to be able to autofill the formula to the right, I need to lock only the row. So I'll press Fn, F4 on my keyboard. If your keyboard does not require Fn, you just press F4 twice so that it only locks the rows. Put a comma and then tell us which row number that you want to return. You've told us this is the set of uh, values that you want to return, but which row number do you want to return? In this case, we need to match uh, the ranks that are in column G and match them against the ranks in column C. And therefore, the function that we need here is match function in Excel. Uh, 
then what we are matching we are looking up for this rank number one put a comma but before the comma you need to lock the g uh, so i press fn4 three times put a comma and then highlight the range from this list column c that needs to be locked absolutely so that it doesn't shift when you're moving the formula to the right side then put a comma and tell us what sort of a match are you doing is it an exact match or not so i'll press zero for exact match i close the bracket for the match function then i close for the index when i press enter you see the item that is ranked number one here is what you see here on this formula and now if i highlight this range where i want the results then i can press or activate the formula bar you can also press f2 then press Control enter then it will auto fill the formula uh, across board so having gotten the numbers in a sorted order we can then highlight this go to insert tab we need a budget so it's under the column section here we can choose this one so this is the chart that we get let me put it here on the side let me also resize it the next part is just uh, doing some bit of formatting first of all i want the highest value to be at the top so what i do i'll just right click the y-axis labels choose format axis i'll get these formatting options here on the right side and all i need to check is this option that says categories in reverse order and that will push the highest values on top alternatively in terms of the ranking we could also have said rank ascending then it will not have issues in that case the next thing we need to worry about is how do we then highlight the top five items here because we cannot manually go and change the colors we could do that format the data series and then change the colors here the solid fill manually uh, but we'll have to do it one by one like that choose the solid fill and so forth but then we want it to be dynamic such that if this data changes then it will always highlight the top five or top three or top ten now in our case we are going to stick with top five and therefore in column j what we need is to create another column that will highlight the numbers which are in the top five so i'll just call it top n uh, values then we are gone ahead and do a formula here that says if the value or the rank here is less than or equals to five and this five can be also made dynamic uh, but for now let's type it hard coded put a comma then we return the value because it's already sorted we want to return the value that is adjacent to that otherwise we can also return an empty string by just opening and closing the double quotes again we can also apply the formatting just like we did before and one we have to fill you can see the numbers pull through downstream next we need to add this new column to be part of our chart here so you can go ahead and select the chart usually you have to select from the edges of the chart not inside because that way it will be selecting something inside the chart so you just click towards the edges then it will highlight the values that are currently plotted and down here at the bottom right of this bluish uh, selection you can manually adjust if you see when I hover over, I get this double-edged uh, arrow. Then I can drag it to the right so that it can accommodate the new field as you can see here. Alternatively, you could also copy the new field here that you've created, just the numbers. Put Ctrl-C to copy, select your chart, and then Ctrl-V to paste. So the next thing that we need to do here is to tidy up this chart and therefore what I'll be doing is to right click any of the series here and choose to format uh, data series. As you can see here on the right side therefore you get these options. Uh, so make sure you're on this icon that looks like a chart here. Then you'll get this option that says series overlap and gap width. 
And so in this case, the series overlap needs to be 100% so that the new uh, top N items can fully overlap 100% and be on top of this original series. So in this case, we're gonna do 100% as you can see here, then you can't see the previous, it's still there, but now it has been uh, overshadowed. The next thing we can also do here is to reduce the gap width so that the bars are closer together, maybe to about 80% as such. Now I want us to apply a faint gray color to the original series which has all the numbers and then the one that we want to draw attention to can remain with the orange color. And therefore with this series selected you can also change the same on the right side where you have these formatting options, you can choose here whether you want series 2 or you want from this uh, drop down to choose the original series. So once you do that, you need to choose solid fill and then you can choose the color that you want to work with. In this case, we can go with this light blue and then uh, probably choose the series number 2. And in case you need to change the color, you can also go ahead and choose solid fill and probably maybe use a darker shade of the same like that. So as it is right now, the chart still has some bit of clutter. And what we need to do is to probably remove some of the items that we have here. First thing we want to do is click on this plus button and then choose to uncheck grid lines. If you see, that makes it a bit tidy. When it is on, it's a bit busy. Then we can also select the axis and choose to disable the primary horizontal axis like that. The next thing we want to do is to apply data labels on this original series, the one that has all the values. What we need to do here is to make sure the one selected is series uh, the dollar value one, the one that has all the numbers, then you can either click on this plus button and choose to enable data labels or you could also right click here and choose add data labels as such. So there are many other properties that we can adjust to polish this chart but the last one I want to comment on is uh, on the data labels, the numbers are too huge. So we are going to right click any of the numbers and choose to format data labels here. Then we get the formatting options on the right side. You can see here it takes the default formatting of the source data. I don't want that so I'll choose here to custom and then the custom code here I want to type. The code here will be hash comma hash 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 that tells Excel if the number is above a thousand it needs to have a thousand separator then I will follow that with dot zero hash zero is a placeholder hash is a placeholder when I use zero what I'm telling Excel is that the number must be shown whether it is dot zero or dot seven or dot six when you do the rounding when we do the next step here which is to put two commas the first comma means divide by a thousand the next comma means divide by a million if you want to divide by a billion and then you put a third comma and then the fourth comma will divide by a trillion so in this case we just put two commas and then finally we put letter m in double quotes so that it shows these values in millions so if i press add you can see the numbers show uh, in millions to two decimal places because we have said dot zero hash we could also have said dot hash hash uh, but i prefer to show at least the first value after the decimal i can also change this to top three inside my formula then i'll autofill downwards you can see it automatically changes that if that number was somewhere in my cell if i put it here and i say i want the top seven for instance uh, maybe i say show top then I ask you to type what you want to show there. Then I can link that to, instead of typing here in the formula, I can choose where that number seven is and that needs to be locked. Then I auto fill downwards to the last row. 
you can see automatically it shows that if I put one, so it can be any number that you choose to display. So that would be the same logic if you're using Office 365. So if we switch to this screen here, we are starting with the same data set and we want to create the subset here that will drive the data. Remember the previous version we had to type the ranking and everything else, but if you're using Excel 2021 or Office 365, then you have access to this formula that is called sort or sort by. So I'll go ahead and type sort, then it will ask me what array or what data range do you want to sort. So I'll highlight this entire range. The sort index uh, is the column that will be basis, the basis of sorting. So in this case, we have column two columns in the data. So I'll put the second column by typing number two. Then here we choose again to show in descending order. And that's all that is needed for this formula to work. Now with this one, then you can take or highlight the top five items or top X items. Uh, so in this case, uh, there is another dynamic array formula here that is called take. So I'll say take and then the array will be this one, the one that we've already returned in a sorted order. Put a comma and then tell us how many rows do you want to return. So I'll put number five so that I get the top five items. And therefore, as you can see, this one will return the top five items. Now, if I choose again, show top N, then I ask you to type the number here. Maybe I type three. And just like before, if I come back to this, I can then link the number three that we had typed to that cell. And as you can see here, if I choose to show 25 of them, it will return everything. If I do, do 10, then I get 10 items. So once you get these uh, numbers here, the process will be the same in terms of doing the chart and therefore will not be repeating. I believe this has gone a long way in showing you how you can draw attention to top X items on your chart. Uh, leave a comment if you have a question or if you have a different way you would approach the same. Let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to interact with you. See you in the next video.